Hey, Garrett Rowe here uh, with my good friend Travis Glassman. Um, this video is going to be some videos related to frequently asked questions. And you and I, we get the same questions. Uh, people that follow you or people that follow Heads Up Decoy, um, maybe they're not comfortable messaging me or maybe they've messaged me and I couldn't get back to them quick enough. But I know you field a lot of questions uh, about which decoy, when to deploy, blah, 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 you know, a myriad of things. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to go and we're going to hit a couple of those high points. And uh, so we're going to start with those videos right now. Okay, very good. All right, so the number one question Garrett and I get, and we've talked about this, and it's over and over, we, it keeps hitting us, is do you use a buck or a doe decoy? Well, in my opinion, that's a general question because the first question I ask back is what species are you going after? Okay, so if you're a whitetail hunter and you only want to buy one, hands down, Garrett and I both agree that it's the buck decoy. Yeah. And the reason for that is because we primarily hunt the last week or two of October and then all of November, and we take advantage of the high testosterone in these bucks, take advantage of their uh, drive to breed, their aggression, their uh, dominance, all of those things. We love hunting during the rut. I think everybody does. It's action packed. So anytime you get a buck decoy, especially if you add movement by hand holding it and moving through terrain and getting inside those bucks comfort zone, um, that's when it really pays off. So um, I'll just start by saying I started shooting more dominant deer more often as soon as I became mobile. Now I, I used to tree stand hunt, I still tree stand hunt, I ground blind hunt. I love that part of it, just sitting and relaxing. However, the, the likeliness of a big mature dominant buck coming by your setup just by you sitting still is way less than you going to him and making something happen. At least that's my experience. So um, buying a whitetail buck decoy is the best thing I've ever done as far as whitetail hunting goes. And uh, if you want to follow along, you can kind of see some of the stuff that, you know, some of the experiences I've had, it's just been fantastic. So anyway, hands down, whitetail buck, if you're going to get after the whitetails. If you're going after a mule deer, um, this, this little gem right here is also something that I will never leave home without. Every single time I go hunting, because luckily I live in an area where I could come across mule deer or whitetail, I grab a mule deer doe and a whitetail buck. And the reason why I like the doe for the mule deer is because mule deer are primarily herd animals. They like to run in herds. The bucks round up the girls during the rut. A whitetail buck is somewhat different to where he likes to single one doe off and get away from everybody. So that's why I use the, the buck to go in and, and make him angry like I'm invading his territory. However, the mule deer, um, I like to entice them by showing them this decoy and saying, hey, there's a new girl in town. Uh, sometimes the does will be curious enough because they're social and, and herd animals that they will come in themselves and the buck will be coming right behind them just because he's gonna follow. So I take advantage of um, the curiosity one, and then also that buck, if you give it enough time, it's very likely that he's gonna come in and try to scent check the doe that he's unsure of. He doesn't know who it is, or maybe he thinks he lost one of the does in his herd. And he's gonna try to round her up and scent check and make sure everything is in his favor, so. And you know, one of the things about the, the doe decoy that I will say too for mule deer is you get a cruising mule deer buck and they see that and you know you can reel them in from hundreds of yards away yes, absolutely i have popped this thing up like you said 300 yards and you know if you're patient they will likely come in however we like to close that distance to around the 80 yard mark uh just because obviously the closer you get the more likely that buck's going to feel or that the more likely that buck is going to be comfortable with either leaving his girls to come sit check you, or he may just try to push everybody to you. So um, that's the beauty of this doe decoy is I've just been so many times in, in a full day full of jam packed action just because deer just moving about, checking each other out and, and just be patient with it because it will likely happen for you. 
And I will say that we do, our, our mule deer buck decoy is getting some popularity yep. and um, my all my experience basically is with the doe. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the majority of my good experiences are with the doe decoy. Um, then as I developed the mule deer buck decoy, our mule deer started vanishing. So I don't have, I don't get to hunt them as much as I would like to. Um, so we are getting some, uh, we are we are gaining some knowledge on the mule deer buck, but if you were to call me, call Travis, and you were gonna buy one, we would tell you to get the mule deer doe. If you're gonna buy one whitetail decoy, you're gonna buy the whitetail buck. Right. Um, you know, one of the things about the whitetail buck that I am gonna say is that the first thing people look at and they say, oh man, that's really, those antlers are really white. And over time, we've, Gained, we've developed a little bit of an appreciation for that because they are highly visible and they can be seen from a long ways away and that's really what we're doing is we want that we want the antlers to pop we want we want them to be seen um, we're gonna go over kind of like the distance but there are times that hey we may not be able to get as close as we want and we want to make sure that the whatever it is that we're showing them is visible and the white antlers they only bother some people. They don't bother us, and yep. uh, we've shot plenty of deer over the top of them. So don't freak out about that. Yep. So the key point here is, he said they bother some people, but from all of the experience in the field, and and we've been through a lot of stocks and, and a lot of experiences. I've never had one time where a buck has strayed away from a decoy because I felt the antlers were white. Yeah. The only time we've seen a buck a little bit shy is when he's when he's inferior and he's not confident enough to come in and and face the decoy so i like how visible these things are I, when i want the deer to see the decoy that works in your your favor big time. and we try to make them bigger as a dominant mature looking buck if i could make them bigger i would uh, but this is about what the decoy can support um so the decoy is big, it's meant to be big, so it's meant to challenge that um, maybe a mature buck that might have a doe, or um, maybe there's a cruising buck and he sees this thing from a distance and he goes, oh, he's probably got a girl, so I'm gonna go over and check him out. Mm -hmm. So if you see the quick take on the antlers, don't freak out, yeah, yeah you know, it's good that they're light colored. Yeah. And it may not have crossed your mind, you know. It so, was yeah. something that never really struck yeah. me as. And I get a problem, some questions but, about. I get some questions yeah. about them. Well, they're awfully white. And I'm like, well, you can scrape them on the ground, muddy them up, dirty them up, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but to us, to if that's what you choose to do, that's yeah. fine. But trust me, they're going to work just fine for you. Yep.